We're talking to evangelist uh, Ernest Steffens, and of course, uh, Reverend Steffens is the uh, leader of the pa Peter's Rock Christian Fellowship, and uh, we're talking about some of, uh, some of the activities that he enjoyed while he was uh, in Africa. And of course, uh, Reverend Steffens, let us pick up where we left off the last time sure. by simply having you to, uh, in a real sense, give us a report. Be honest. Uh, dealing with uh, some of the things that uh, impress you uh, while you were uh, in Africa. And, and, and I think that in doing so, uh, that not only will allow you to talk about some things, but it will also inform our audience of sure. different things. Sure, sure. Well, there were two places. Uh, in, in 2005, when, when God put on my heart to go to Africa, specifically, I was to minister to the Sudanese. Mm -hmm. So I ended up in a place called Kakuma. Mm -hmm. Kakuma is a refugee camp, again, um, that's located in northern um, Kenya, southern mm -hmm. Sudan, Dan, on the border. Mm -hmm. And uh, it said that there's probably uh, now 60,000 folk there who are finding refuge, mm -hmm. refuge from civil war of 22 years. And uh, I traveled with a bishop, mm -hmm. uh, and I had to really go through uh, a lot of paperwork to mm -hmm. enter into that, that uh, refugee camp. Mm -hmm. But uh, having said that, we, we were able to get in, and God positioned me to be able to administer the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in the morning and in the afternoon. This mm -hmm. is the, this is my schedule to look like in Kokuma, and I'll share with you some mm -hmm. of the people I encountered. Mm -hmm. uh, in the morning time, I would get up, and in Africa you have tea. We mm -hmm. have coffee here in America, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they had tea. And when we get up, and after tea, around 9 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, I would, uh, with my translator, mm -hmm. head into the community. Mm -hmm. And, and into the villages, mm -hmm. and, and, and we would walk probably uh, for 20 minutes from one village to the other mm -hmm. in the refugee camp. And while we were there, uh, uh, the, the first folk that I had opportunity to minister to, thank God for the children, mm -hmm. there were some children praying, and the Lord told me to get up under this tree and start teaching them the story of King David and mm -hmm. how God used a little boy to become a king one day. Mm -hmm. And, and, the, and, the, and the, the translator was translating this information. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I... I could see in their little eyes, because I'm a preacher, mm -hmm. I, I know when the light says green, mm -hmm. when it okay. says red, and when it says yellow. Okay. And so I could see in their eyes it was green light. They mm -hmm. were just ready to go. And so I just fed, shared with them stories, Bible stories. Mm -hmm. and, and at the conclusion of each story, when I completed uh, sharing with them, I would scream, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the kids would shout back, hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so that was the, uh, so in, day, in, in day, later days, as I traveled through the mm -hmm. uh, villages, when they saw me coming, they were scream hallelujah <laughs> and I would scream hallelujah <laughs> so by the time I got to the village where I was traveling to by foot mm -hmm. sometimes by bicycle mm -hmm. but most time by foot mm -hmm. the children would be shouting hallelujah and so they would gather the sick mm -hmm. and in this this one particular day um, this teenage girl she was a Sudanese girl she came to me and she said, come, come with me, come with me uh, and pray for the, the blind lady. Mm -hmm. And I said, pray for the blind lady, glory to God. Mm -hmm. See, God had already told me mm -hmm. that I would witness blind eyes opening, mm -hmm. uh, ears popping clear, yeah, okay. and, 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 and the lame walking. Mm -hmm. He had already told me before I left this mm -hmm. continent. Mm -hmm. When we got there, I appro uh, they introduced me to a blind lady, and as I approached her, she was on a mat mm -hmm. that was up under a tree. See, mm -hmm. in America, we spoke. We spoil, oh, Dr. Haney. On, we spoil. On. See, we think that we think that poverty is two uh, to our two children sleeping in the same bed. Go on. But poverty in Africa is a family trying to find refuge under a tree. Mm -hmm. And when I walked up on this lady and she, this blind lady, she was uh, she was kneeling down on her mat. This young girl took me to her. And when I approached her, she said, this is the blind lady. Mm -hmm. And so I laid hands, and, and we have video, we have document uh, uh, mm -hmm. pictures uh, of this, this occurrence, because my translator was also my cameraman. Mm -hmm. He did a wonderful job, and he captured a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, he captured miracles that God performed. Mm -hmm. and, and so I laid hands on this lady's eyes, and prayed with her, and she weeped, and I weeped, and, and we, she fell to the ground, I fell to the ground, and the Lord just had me to continue to pray with her. Mm -hmm. And when she opened her mouth, my translator is translating to me, and mm -hmm. what he said to me was, she said, now I can see, Good. I can mm -hmm. see a mm -hmm. rainbow. Mm -hmm. And I said, glory to God. And one of the things about uh, 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 Africa, the people in Africa, mm -hmm. I'm told that one out of every 1,400 will see a doctor. One mm -hmm. person out of 1,400 in their lifetime mm -hmm. will see a doctor. Mm 
And so the conclusion, my conclusion is, if you don't know how to believe God for your healing, Good. you get to have your sickness. Mm -hmm. And so these folk knew how to believe God for their healing. Mm -hmm. And so when I laid hands on that woman and those who gathered around her in faith, we pressed in mm -hmm. and she said, I can and see, see a it a looks rainbow. like a, a rainbow. rainbow. And my thought were, my, uh, <laughs> the man I am, in the natural thought, what is, how does a blind woman know what a rainbow, rainbow looks, looks like? like. Mm -hmm. Praise God. On that same day, uh, and I would go out in the morning time and I would minister until probably 12 o'clock and then I would go home, mm -hmm. go back to my compound home, go back to my compound, mm -hmm. which was my home, go back to the compound. And then I would go back out about three o'clock and stay out mm -hmm. to probably six. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so this day, the, 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 uh, the, Another day, mm. a, a young, the same young girl came and got me. Mm. She said, we want you to pay, pray for the baby mm. who's deaf. Yeah. And so the translator and I said, well, ask her how long this baby has been deaf. So the baby was deaf at birth. So they, we walked for probably 45, 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. When we got there, here was mom with the baby in her arm. Mm. And I laid hands on this baby. And I started believing God for the, that, that these ears were going to pop clear, that this mm -hmm. baby was going to hear. Mm -hmm. But I was distracted, Dr. Haney, mm -hmm. because in the back of me was a kid on a bicycle, but he was ringing the bell, ding, ding, mm -hmm. ding. And the whole time I'm praying, mm -hmm. that bell distracted me. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't know until after I finished praying the significance of the bell. bell. Uh -huh. So after I completed praying, the Holy Ghost said, have the kid to ding the bell now and turn the baby the other way. Mm -hmm. So I turned the baby the other way, and we've got a video of this. Mm -hmm. I turned the baby the other way, had mom to turn the baby the other way, and told a little boy to ding, ding the, the bell. bell. And when the boy dinged the bell, and the baby swung, swung his around, head the baby around could looking, hear the bell. For, looking for the baby. The bell. See, when, 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 when folks saw that, I didn't have to tell, tell them that the baby could see. see. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. They knew the baby was looking for the bell. <laughs> I didn't have to tell them <laughs> that the baby could see. Praise God. They could see that the baby could see. I didn't have to tell them the baby can, I mean, the baby can now hear. Mm. I didn't have to tell them that. Mm. The baby looking recognized, uh, mm. uh, those around recognized mm. that the baby could hear. Mm. And so I had multiple experiences. I went in and prayed in the hospital there in Kakuma with the sick. It took me a day and a half. I mm -hmm. prayed in, I went to every ward, the maternity ward. To, there was a lot of AIDS. There was a lot of HIV. There was mm -hmm. a lot of malaria, a lot of depression. We laid hands and believed God with them. Mm -hmm. and, and we saw mm -hmm. God deliver, mm -hmm. heal, and set free. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful. Mm -hmm. now, see, I know that it's not because of anything mm -hmm. that I can do. Reverend, let, let, let us have this uh, second commercial break, and we'll come back and we'll allow you an opportunity to yes, continue this yes, uh, testimony. Yes, and, of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. They survive.